Hello, now we're going to talk about programming during production. So we got this nice panel here, got five soldering pen PCBs in this panel. And if you look closely, you should be able to see here, this is the ICSP header. And this ICSP header is just SMD pads. There's no hole all the way through the PCB because the component density is so high. There's simply not just not, not as there's simply not enough space to place a full header on this PCB. So what are we gonna do about that? We're going to use pogo pins. If you search eBay for spring test probe, you can find these pins. And you can get a lot of different types. First you have to make sure you get the right size. So this of course is way too small. It'll fit nice in a 0.5 millimeter hole, but this is no good for us. Then you have to look at the tip, because you can get it a, a pointy type, needle type here, and you can have it one with a little head. And the one with a little head won't go through if you have a pad with a hole in it. But since we don't, we can skip this. I just want to show you a small jig I made. This uh, jig here is two small amplifier boards. These are unpopulated. I put the pins all the way through the holes and soldered them to the PCB. And then I can take a populated PCB and just press it slightly up here. I'll do it like this. So now we have a good solid connection just for testing. And we can test if the amplifier is good. So this is power, this is the input signal volume and the speaker output here. So when I put this down here, we can test it. But these pads have holes in them. So that's, that is why we use this uh, pogo pin with a head on it. But since we don't have that kind of connections on the soldering pen, we only have this small pad here. We have to use the pointy type, the needle type. So that's one thing. Spring test probe, find them on eBay. They are quite pricey. You get a hundred in a bag, they will go, take you far. The next thing we're going to need is four screws, four nuts, and some five millimeter standoffs, and some ten millimeter standoffs. Also going to need a screwdriver, of course, a socket wrench, and some pliers. We have some free printed brackets. This is a bottom bracket, the top bracket with the outline of the PCB, and two identical brackets with holes where the ICSP header is. So how do we make these? That is the first question. So first we open the PCB design, and if we have a look, this is the circuit maker, the Altium circuit maker. So this is a nice 3D view of the soldering pen PCB. You can see here on the underside, we have the ICSP header. If we go back to 2D view, we can highlight the layer. So now here we have the bottom layer. We have the origin down here in the corner. Now we have, we can easily find the offset. We can actually use the bottom offset. So this pad here, this one. So it's four millimeter and 34.56 millimeters. So we can use that offset as a base and then we know it's 0.1 inch to all the other directions. So this is the first thing we need to do. Then the next thing we can do is to export this as a step file. Now this is not a circuit maker tutorial so I won't go into details on how to export the oh sorry it wasn't a step file it was an STL file but anyway this STL file is what came out of the circuit maker and you can see it pretty much resembles what the PCB we, we saw just before even got the button models and we got all the details of the PCB here so the next thing we have to do is to create the outline of the the base. So I've already made this. 
I have this jig bottom. I can show you this. Like this. So now we have a nice cube with some holes in it that will encapsulate the whole PCB. So I made this as a module in the open scale. So we just turn this off again. I can also have this the top one. It's basically the same outline, but it has some it has a cutout for the whole PCB rendered fully here. But it has a small groove in either side on both sides where the PCB can rest on. So we won't be able to press it all the way through. So this is a top one where the that PCB is gonna be placed into. There we go. Yeah. And now of course we also have the middle one. The middle one is where the holes for the pogo pins are gonna go. There we go. So it's the same base plate and we have the pogo pin holes and they are made with the distance where they're found in circuit maker so we can see here there are probably many ways to do this and I'm not that good at writing comments so we have the base plate here the code and we have the four mounting holes we're using a difference so everything that we subtract from the first base object will make holes in it and then here we have the X coordinate and the Y coordinate and the reason I add two here is that when I imported the STL file, I actually offset it by two, and that is because the origin in the circuit maker wasn't the all the way down at the bottom. The mini jack plug is actually uh, starts at minus two, so that's the reason we have plus two here. We set the diameter of the holes 1.6. My printer is not perfectly calibrated, so I need slightly larger holes to accommodate for this. And then we can just translate the remaining holes with the offset of 0.1 and 0.2 inches. And then the first three holes are in the same X uh, plane, so to speak. And the next three holes are offset with 0.1 inch in the Y dimension. So there we have it. Now two of these middle ones, one, one top and one bottom, print this. Now we have made and 3D printed the brackets we need. We can start assembling. And we're going to start from the bottom. Well, we can start from the top as well, but here goes. And I'll start with the screws from the underside here. And there's actually a reason for that. I'll come back to that in a second. So the socket wrench isn't exactly necessary, but it's nice to have. And this socket wrench was one I got. I was supposed to be for the nuts, but I bought it a size too small. It'll do nicely. The bottom plate is of course full, there's no holes in it, to make sure the pogo pins won't go all the way through. And we could make this base a little bit wider if we wanted to, but it's not, ne not necessary. These can go in either way. So these are the 10 millimeter standoffs and there's, well I haven't been doing any higher mathematics about this, I just saw what fitted the pogo pins and then I adjusted accordingly. So now we of course have to align the holes and the brackets with each other, like so, and now we do the 5 millimeters. And the 5 millimeters will just give enough space between the top plate and the, what shall we call it, mounting bracket 
the bracket where the PCB is going to be inserted into. So these, this is going to give a distance that is needed, like this. Mm -hmm. And then the nuts here on the top. So it's really pretty straightforward this construction here. The reason, the reason I choose to mount the screws upside down, so to speak, is that the threading on the five millimeter standoffs is pretty. What do you call it? Not deep, shallow. <laughs> And I only have 10 millimeter screws. So this was actually the only way I could make it fit. Okay. It doesn't need to be that tight. It's just nice. So it won't fall apart when I start using this. All right. Now, of course, we have these pogo pins, and if we have done it right, we can just insert it here. We can use the pliers to pull it all the way through. So now the pogo pins will rest on the bottom plate. So now we have six pogo pins inserted into a nice handy jig and we can take an assemble PCB. Here we have the programming header. Put it down here. Mm -hmm. It will fit. So now we have to connect the pogo pins to the header or, or another header so we can put in a programmer to that. We'll do that. So now we've got the programming jig assembled, soldered the wires, put them on a header and insert it into an Arduino. So the Arduino here is running the Arduino as ISP sketch. So all I need to do is now just to plug this in. Mm -hmm. And then I can take one of my devices here and I can turn it on. So I'll probably need to turn off some of the light. I'll do like this. Okay, so you should be able to see now it's running a test sketch, a hardware test sketch I've made. So I can press a button and it starts testing the LED, all the LEDs, it's an RGB LED. So it says, of course, first the red, green, and then the blue one. It's uh, fading. So it starts with the red, fades to green. Like this, yes, and then oh, it's blue, and then it turns off, and then I can press a button. I can see that it works, and I can press the other button here. Might be a hard with my fat fingers. It's a green one, and then I also have a hall center. I can take a magnet like this, and we should be able to get that signal as well. So now I know that the buttons in the hall center and the LEDs are working. But that's a pretty good sign. And I, I can do all this just with the jig. So the moment I put this in the jig, it will start self-testing. Pretty neat. So this can also be used for the finished programming, the last program that I need to do on the PCBs. So there you have it. Pogo pins. They are pretty awesome. So go out and make your own jig today. Hey, if you like this video, then please consider liking it, sharing it, or subscribing to my YouTube channel, so you can get the latest updates on my new videos and electronics projects. Thank you.